The Order, the strongest group of assassins within Sakamoto days. As you'd expect, the Order keeps the balance of the assassin world, quells any rebellions, and takes direct orders from the head of the JAA, also known as the Japanese Association of Assassins. The members of the Order are a motley crew of mostly virtuous killers. But how can killers be virtuous? The main difference here is in the world of Sakamoto days, assassins are all over the place, and the Order serves as the secret police of the biggest assassination organization, that being the JAA. Killing is unavoidable for Order members. They do not choose to kill, rather they get missions from the JAA and then draw fortune tracks to decide who does what in a mission. Keeping that in mind, let's get into the video. The legendary assassin Taro Sakamoto is no longer a member of the Order. However, he's the main character so it's important to talk about him anyway. For Sakamoto, almost anything is a weapon. When it comes to a fight with no traditional weapons around, he's the strongest. Sakamoto is no longer an assassin as his priorities are now with his family. Speaking of being more of a family man, Sakamoto has put on a bit of weight and is quite a bit out of practice relative to his prime assassination days. It seems the only reason he left the order at all is due to the fact that Sakamoto has given up killing as it's forbidden by his wife. Some of the order are annoyed that he left, though when it comes to one order member, Nagumo, Sakamoto is still good friends with him. Nagumo is a master of disguise and trickery, and while he may appear to just be another regular member of the Order, he is shown to be a near equal if not outright superior to our current day and out of shape Sakamoto. This is suggested by a few statements in the story, such as when Nagumo tells Sakamoto he is screwed if he is struggling with hard-boiled, as well as how Slur ranked Nagumo as an S-rated target with Sakamoto only being a B. Similarly to his tricky demeanor, his weapon has a bit of built-in deception as well. It almost looks like a regular sword, but it folds out like a Swiss army knife of swords. He is not only a swordsman as he carries a D6 that he throws to perhaps distract his opponents, or maybe it makes his slashes stronger. Either way, when the die comes out, it's often lights out for his opponents. Nagumo has been friends with Sakamoto since his school days, and they were both troublemakers at that time. So far, we've only gotten two flashbacks of them at school, but it's clear Nagumo cares about Sakamoto beyond just being a former teammate on the order. Now, to get into whether he's good or bad. Nagumo has done quite a few good things taking down a serial killer that appeared at Sakamoto's store at the behest of Sakamoto himself. And when it comes to the order, he saved a former member named Yatsumura from dying. He also helped disguise Sakamoto to get him into the assassination school called the JCC. It doesn't take any smoke and mirrors for the audience to be convinced that Nagumo is a good guy. Now here's some more information on Yatsumura. As a previous founding member of the order, he has an interesting backstory. He was banished from the Order for failing to kill a group of conspirators bent on assassinating the chief of the JAA and killing his wife. At first one may assume that he's evil for this, however the truth is more complex. His wife was one of the conspirators that he was ordered to kill, and she revealed that she was a conspirator from the start, spending two years of her life married to him and even having a child with him undercover. She forced him to choose between killing her wife or their son, and he chose to save the son. He also chained Shishiba at a younger age. However, Shishiba didn't really care about how sappy and emotional Yatsumura was. The weapon that Yatsumura uses is a three-second staff with a sharp blade on each end and a chain connecting the staff together. To say if Yatsumura is a good guy or not is pretty easy. He's definitely a good guy, though he's not really a proper order member anymore. Shishiba. The key defining visual feature of Shishiba is a big scar on his chin, which was given to him when he was younger by Yatsumura. The weapons that Shishiba carries into battle are twin hammers, mirroring his precise and accurate nature, avoiding excess damage to his surroundings. So as mentioned already, Shishiba is tasked to eliminate Yatsumura for failing his job. This is where things get a bit messy. As Shishiba defeated Yatsumura but failed to kill him, he left Yatsumura for dead but refused to kill him as he felt like he didn't have a reason for it. For how good an assassin Shishiba is, he's shown to be lazy and non-confrontational, but I think he uses this tendency as an excuse for when in reality he just didn't want to kill Yatsumura. Yatsumura's harsh training and frequent missions he would take Shishiba on were still not enough for Shishiba to want to kill him. If anything, this mentor-mentee relationship is mirrored Shishiba and his new partner Osaragi. Oh, and of course Shishiba is a good guy. Of the assassins in the order, he's probably the most well-disciplined. Otherwise, it's quite possible Nagumo would have let it slip to the higher-ups that he didn't kill Yatsumura. Osuragi, the silly partner of Shishiba within the order. She is paired with him not only because he is strong, but also since he has a lot he can teach her. She's always seen eating food or snacks. She's also very picky who she shares those snacks with. 
as the newest member, Osuragi, is shown to be immature and quite spacey, sometimes getting attacked as a result. Her absent-minded nature works well with her weapon of choice being a big buzzsaw, causing wanton destruction all around her. Her justification comes from the fact that she doesn't really consider her targets people, as we see her relating people to animals, and how she compares her serial killer opponent, Dump, to a fly in her house, with that house being the JA. Although she may be immature, Osuragi still does seem to think killing is wrong, and to this point has not killed anyone outside of her target. This is expanded on as she says, if I were the gods, I would have never created people like you and me to dump. This means even more as she's quite religious and does to at least some degree understand killing is bad. Now onto if she's a good or bad person, I would say she's a decently good order member but could do better, but she's still new. Kanaguri is the only undoubtedly evil member of the order though he spends more time working with Slur than actually doing work for the Order. Kanaguri doesn't show up in person when the rest of the Order members are introduced, but we are introduced to his films near the start of the story. The murder movies he makes as the information for assassins on their targets, providing an organic way to exposit information about new characters. The first time we see Kanaguri happens during the JCC exam arc tournament as the main antagonist of the arc. We also learn in the same chapter that he films all of his movies on location and only ended up in the order because he killed a member over an argument about movies. As a movie fanatic, Kanaguri has killed people over ruining his shots, damaging his camera, or just insulting his movies. His weapon of choice is a clapperboard, which in tandem he uses to kill people and to start scenes. Now onto his morality. He doesn't do missions properly, he's worked with slur, and lastly kills civilians and targets unrelated to his mission. Worst of all, when fighting Sakamoto at the JCC, he kills a teacher there, Etsuko Satoda, who could have joined the order but declined. This enrages Sakamoto, leading him to absolutely school Kanaguri. While being defeated by Sakamoto, we're, we're told by Nagumo that Kanaguri is kicked out of the order for siding with the enemy. So not only is he kicked out of the order, but he's also a bad person and director. Yo is a good guy. Let's get this out of the way first off. He does finish off a stray serial killer, but killing is a part of his job description. His weapon of choice is a pair of brass knuckles. Now let's get on to why this entry is a stub. He died pretty promptly to a member of Slur's crew. His death, however, is not completely his fault as he was defending Hisuke, who I'll talk about again later. Honorable, a cool and strong guy, but ultimately not talented enough to be an order member at his own admission. On the complete other end of the spectrum, we have Takamura, the sword saint of the order. A man who doesn't open his eyes or even speak coherently outside of a one-shot. All he carries into battle is his trusty katana with his EI strike that he slices cars clean in half and even cuts off Gaku's arm, who is the right-hand man of Slur. As a monster of pure bloodlust and sword skills that make even Nagumo sweat, it's easy to see why Takamura doesn't talk a lot. His actions speak for him. To answer whether he's good or bad, we have not seen Takamura in conflict with any good people nor does he attack those with no ill will against him. So by our standards, he is good and maybe the strongest in the order bar none. Kamihate, the sniper of the order. His main quote-unquote appearance is a fight with Hisuke, who is the sniper of Sakamoto's crew. Kamihate believes that a solitary lifestyle is best for sniping, so nobody even knows what he looks like. The reason why Kamihate comes into conflict with Sakamoto and his group is that he is a world record for the world's longest sniper shot. However, in reality, it's Sakamoto who killed the guy that Kamihate got credit for. Sakamoto doesn't care, but Hisuke jumps at the opportunity to fight another sniper. This is the first time we really get to see an order member go all out. The only reason Kamihate didn't kill Hisuke is that Hisuke saw his face before he pulled the trigger. Kamihate is distraught at this. He then asks Hisuke to cheer him up, and they become friends. The fact that Takano Jutsu worked on Kamihate suggests to me that he is likely a good guy, though he took one hell of a fight to convince him first. Kindaka, a founding member of the order, he was the recruiter at the time, though the term recruiter might be a bit charitable. Kindaka is more of a test that you aren't supposed to pass, meant to get rid of troublesome students. However, if they somehow miraculously survive, they get to join the order. So when Sakamoto, Nagumo, and Akao get in trouble, they're sent on one of these doomed missions. Though with their powers combined, they would likely succeed. This mission was to escort the wife and daughter of the head of the JAA at the time, though they were both disguised initially. Now for the spanner in the works here. Slur, while still being an unassuming student, unlike the rest of the three, was also sent on this mission. Slur, while under orders from his evil brother, who is now the current head of the JAA, was supposed to just kill the two people being escorted, though he balked at the idea of killing innocents. So instead, Slur asks if he can take out Kendaka. His brother says that works. So when everyone is conveniently poisoned by someone in the way of their escort, this poison in particular accelerates when you move fast. This poison Slur uses to take out Kandaka, 
as when he picks up the antidote, he drops it on purpose. Kendaka would rather sacrifice himself for some random teenager, so he jumps to get it. This leads to him being comatose for the rest of the story. As a whole, the order doesn't neatly fit into being purely good or evil. While keeping the balance could be seen as good, it's more out of necessity than an act of goodwill. The order does what it has to do to keep assassins in check, and as the strongest force the JA has, there's not much in terms of something to check the order themselves. Though they lack checks, some members of the order will often do good deeds, or even potentially divert their mission if it's for the good of others. In the end, the order is good, at least if we measure them by the metrics we have established. Even if they keep the peace out of the need to, an act of good is still an act of good, and the sum of all the parts of the current order shows a high standard of morals and ethics. Thanks for watching. Hi guys, if you're still watching, we made a Discord, so go on and join it if you want. You can talk with me if you want, and suggest new videos or whatever you feel like doing on the Discord.